Hey guys, um, so uh, today I'm going to be answering a question that I got from Preston who emailed me last night. Um, and first I just want to say um, it really means a lot to me, Preston, that uh, you started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because of this channel um, that we had uh, inspired you to start wrestling, give you some confidence there. Um, that means a lot to me, so thank you for uh, reaching out um, and letting me know that. And so... Um, the question kind of comes up as, um, you know, how do I get into more of a blue belt mindset and kind of feels like you are asking, how do I expedite um, becoming a blue belt? And one of the things that I'm going to tell you right off the bat is that once you get your blue belt, you kind of got a target on your back. Um, so in a way, I would say, you know, kind of enjoy being a white belt while you can, um, but um, and, and not try to rush the process too much. Um, but that being said, uh, kind of when we are starting out and doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for the first time, um, really, you know, we are in this kind of state of infancy where really for you, everything should be like a small child who is just absorbing information and being a sponge. Um, but it's sometimes really hard to know what to focus on. And what I would say is that really kind of sticking to a lot of the basics. Um, you know, when you're a white belt, you are kind of going through the stages where pretty much everybody in the gym is better than you. Um, you're going to get smashed, you're going to lose a lot, and it's really important to recognize that that's part of the process. Um, but, you know, you don't want any of your losing to be in vain, as it were, right? Um, a lot of times when we are rolling and it's just like, oh God, these guys keep on smashing me. It's, it's really hard. Um, getting smashed is going to be part of that process, right? Um, it doesn't get easier when you go up in belts. It doesn't, uh, as with experience and that type of thing. And so just, you know, kind of getting used to having people's pressure on top of you, feeling like you can't move, feeling like you can't get out of bad situations. And then learning to kind of meditate in those positions is, is actually really, really, really valuable, and that's a skill. Um, a lot of times when we are starting out in wrestling or in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu specifically, um, you know, we get um, smashed and we, we get this feeling like we have to go faster than the other guy. And if you're always going faster, that's when people get black eyes, that's when people lose teeth, that's when accidents happen and people get hurt. Um, so the other thing is, is that when you're going fast, you are going sloppy, usually, right? And so remember that, you know, controlled and smooth is what you want. And eventually that smoothness will uh, lead to, to speed. Um, I... Last year, I, I rolled with a guy, and I went for um, a far side uh, arm bar uh, from knee ride, right? And the person kind of freaked out because I spun around his body. Once, once, once he pulled his shoulder off the mat and I had that tricep, he wasn't getting his arm back, and I spun around really fast and, you know, fell down into that arm bar, and my legs clamped on and everything was tight, and I didn't even start to even go up to his wrist to hold, control the upper arm. He just started tapping frantically and was like... Oh my God, that was scary, and like he felt like I had no control there. Um, but really, what had happened was that I had practiced that movement so many times, and I was so smooth with transitioning from one side to the other and catching that that armbar that I actually developed that muscle memory. I developed that speed. So um, you know, knowing kind of when to go fast is is uh, a really key thing. And and when you're a white belt. Really, when to go fast is pretty much never, <laughs> okay? Um, so, and this is going to play into something that I'm going to be talking about here, especially when you get into the blue belt stage, which is um, that you start to specialize in things or start looking for things to specialize in. Once you start to identify um, what you're good at, those things, if you do them enough time, you can really become really smooth with them. Um, then those things can be fast and, and can become, you know, lightning and, and be the things that freak people out. And like, ah, oh, you're, you're, you're not controlled when really what you are is you are actually super controlled because you've got that movement down so well. So for right now, 
when you're a white belt, I recommend, um, especially if you're going against another white belt, somebody who has less experience than you, you want to go at half their speed because they're going to be frantic, they're going to be throwing arms, you are the center of that control. And when you are rolling with somebody who is better than you, a blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, um, try to be controlled, right? Try to be uh, more defensive. And that's one of the things. Um, there's kind of a, a saying that, you know, when you're a, uh, uh, a white belt, you do stupid shit. And then when you're blue belt, you start defending shit, right? And then you start doing shit to other people as a purple belt. Um, and when you get to, the, like, the black belt level, you are making other people do stupid shit, right? That's kind of how the saying goes. So, right now, you know, be in that infancy and um, focus really, really on a foundational curriculum. So, here's what I've got written down here is I've got uh, know your curriculum. So, first of all, talk to your coach, right? Have a sit down with them. Sometimes they might want you to schedule an appointment. Schedule that appointment and sit down with them and be like, okay, look, I've been doing this for six months or I've been doing this for two years. Um, and I'm really thinking about, um, you know, wanting to move up to, to blue belt, right? So it's not so much that you're chasing the belt, but you are going up to, to your coach and you are saying that, um, what are the expectations that you have for me to get my blue belt, right? Um, and so in some schools it might be, you know, you have to place in a certain amount of competitions, tournaments, right? Um, some schools value that more than others. Um, other ones would be like, uh, would, would might say, well, you know, here, as in with my school, you had uh, 24 um, uh, classes that you basically had to have memorized. Um, the, Brian called it the B24. And so, and then there's the B48 for blue belts. So the B24 is you have to know all of these uh, techniques um, and they are just your really, really basic techniques. And then we had to test out on them. And part of that test out was not just to, um, you know, see if we knew them and we could, you know, do them when, without, you know, having them show to us beforehand. Um, it was, you know, Brian would say, okay, show me this, show me this. And we went through the entire curriculum and um, we had to be able to demonstrate that. But then more importantly, we, we actually each individually rolled with Brian in order to um, see if those moves are showing up in our rolling. Okay. And that brings me kind of, well, let's first stay, stay here for a second. So when we're talking about curriculum, things that you should know is you should know your top control positions. This is going to be um, you know, side control, scarf hold, uh, both switch bases, so switch base, reverse switch base, north-south position, mount, side mount, maybe an S mount, you know, you should know, you know, what is a low mount, mid-range mount, high mount, that type of thing, um, back mount, top four quarter, um, and you should know, you know, guard, right? And, and when I say guard, you know, we... There are 50 bazillion guards out there. I'm talking about closed guard and basic open guards. So maybe getting into butterfly guard, maybe knowing one or two things about the spider guard, but I wouldn't go any further than that. We're not gonna be playing X guard as a white belt. We're not gonna be playing too much De La Hiva, things like that. So really when you are in that white belt, uh, try to simplify the positions, right? Um, and then know how to transition smoothly from each of those positions, right? So you need to know a guard pass, you need to know how to establish side control, um, you need to know how to transition from side control to scarf hold to north-south to back to uh, scarf hold uh, or switch base and then up to knee ride, you should know how to get into mount, a couple ways of doing that. Um, so just really, really knowing your basic positions um, and being able to demonstrate those um, is going to be a big thing. Um, knowing, like, and I'm going to say, I think when I tested for my white belt, I think we only tested on maybe two guard passes, right? Um, you know, and I think that, you know, knowing two or three guard passes is absolutely vital. Just two or three that you are really good at. Um, and, you know, don't try to go on the internet right now and try to collect a bazillion moves. And a lot of what's on this channel... Um, especially if you're starting from, you know, playlist zero and working your way up. Um, it's going to be all those basic things that you need to know as a white belt. So 
you know, uh, don't try to go into like the fanciest thing yet. Save that for your blue belt. Right now, just really, really focus on, you know, your positions. Um, you should know a couple takedowns. Now, what Brian uh, tells us is every year he uh, tries to work on one takedown and one takedown only, right? And this was even from his wrestling days. And so, you know, if you have, um, you know, as a white belt, probably the first one that you're going to learn is actually just a guard pull. Right. So in your first year as a white belt, maybe you just get really good at pulling guard. Um, then you start maybe working on your Sotogari and then you maybe you start going for a, a single leg the next year. And so by the time that you get, you know, eight years into or 12 years into your black belts, you've got, you know, eight to 12 really good t takedowns. But you're probably only going to be using like maybe two to three. Um, and so really focusing on just one or two here in your white belt stage um, is going to be very, very helpful for you. Um, so you should know how to pass guard. You know, like I said, uh, one or two. Um, you should know how to escape um, a couple of, you know, the, the bottom control positions. So you should know like one or two mount escapes. You should know um, one or two um, side control escapes, you know, a few things here or there. But, um, you know, as a white belt, it, these escapes are probably not going to work that great for you against a higher belt. You're just probably going to end up finding yourself getting submitted and whatnot. And really what I would say to you at this point is that, you know, get better at that defense, right? When you are um, trying to escape, don't abandon an, an escape unless... Um, so, and this is what's something I'm still working on is that, you know, if I'm doing a bridge escape into somebody and I'm trying to get my knee between so I can start to pull guard, um, I have a tendency to try to move on to the next thing a little bit too quickly. Um, and that's one of the things my coach actually pulled me aside about and was like, you need to work on this, um, is sticking with an escape unless, you know, if I'm doing that uh, bridge escape from side control, right? I'm bridging into somebody and they put their arm between my hips and their body. I'm not going to be able to get my knee in there. So I need to actually change at that point. But if I'm, if they're keeping their arm across my body and I'm bridging into them and trying to get that leg in, um, and they're not actively blocking that, then, um, you know, keep going for that escape until you have a reason not to, right? So, um, don't try to roll them. Don't try to do anything else. Just try to keep working on escaping. If you can't, you know, and this is this is a really big point. Ask questions of the of the higher belt that you're rolling with, and being like, "Hey, you know, I was trying to do this escape. Um, was there anything that you noticed that was preventing me from being able to do it that I could be working on to get it better?" And so this is goes into the next point pretty well. Um, and also for your curriculum, no couple submissions from each position, nothing fancy like Americana, Kimura's, arm bars, chokes. Keep it very, very simple. Now, uh, roll with intention. This is the very, very important next point, which is that when you start a roll, um, especially as a white belt, we have this tendency to forget everything that we know. And so when I say roll with attention, maybe that means what you're working on class this that day, you're going to just try to get to that position. Or, you know, if people, that's like it's too fresh on people's minds and it's just not going to happen because everybody knows that, that this is what we're working on class in class today. Um, you know, if there is a position that you happen to be very, very good at maintaining and controlling, so if you're really good at top side control, maybe when you start rolling, that is what you try to go for every time. And, you know, you might be saying, well, people will eventually know that I'm always going for this position that I happen to be very good at getting to. Well, that's where the magic of learning jujitsu comes in, right? Because when people start to block you, when people start defending that because they know you're going to go for that fucking position every single time and they start doing something about that well now you have to change your game right you either need to start shooting shutting down those defenses that they're doing that's stopping them from being able to get on top of you um and you know you have to actually have an answer for that and what that's going to do is it's going to get you back to your favorite position and you're going to be that much better at getting there because people started shutting you down. Or what if that shutdown, like one of my biggest things that I do a lot 
and I mean a lot, is, you know, people will frame when they're trying to block uh, side control, right? They'll put their hand on my bicep and they'll, they'll create that frame and they get on their side, which is exactly one of the things that you should do. But I darts choke just about everybody, right? Um, people frame and I just see that keyhole and I just go right for that darts choke. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, right? Um, but, you know, that defense is a feeder for the next thing that I do. And that's how you start to develop your game, right? So you're rolling with intention saying, this is where I want to get to because I'm good at this position. Conversely, let's say that you are really bad at a position. Well, I'm gonna get to that position because I'm bad at it and I wanna work on it and I don't wanna be so bad. And this may be that, you know, <laughs> you guys tap in and you go, Ugh! Oh dear, I'm on my side, oh my god. Um, I'm stuck in side control, how did this happen, <laughs> right? You might be pulling one of those types of things where you're saying, oh, I'm just gonna give this higher belt this position that I really suck at ex escaping from. Why? Because I want them to hold me in that position so I can try to escape from that position. Um, and I think that's a totally valuable thing to do. If there's something that you want to work on in a role, um, you wanna start from a position, tell your partner, say, this. hey, I want to work on this. I want to get in this position, whether it's a top position or bottom position, because I want to work on this. Um, you don't even have to tell them what the submission is that you're going for, or the transition or whatever, but you want to start in that position. You can't get there because when you are playing this starting open guard position, maybe especially when you're rolling with a brown belt or black belt, you just spend all your time trying to pass that guard that's just impossible to pass. Um, so talking with those higher belts and saying, no, I want to start from this position, um, and a lot of times I, f I feel like especially higher belts who want to support you will be very open to letting you uh, start in an advantaged position because there's something that you want to work on. So um, again, this is all part of higher, uh, rolling with intention, taking mental notes. Um, what are you great at? What are you terrible at? And identifying those things. That's a very good thing to be doing for a white belt. Notice that I'm not telling you to buy a bunch of books. I'm not telling you to do a lot of DVDs or online seminars or collecting the advanced uh, techniques and things like that. You know, this really worth uh, crazy inverted De La Hiva, um spin to, um, you know, Burrata Plata or whatever. You know, I'm just making shit up here. But, um, you know... Don't worry about that that stuff yet, okay? Save that for your blue belt. Uh, focus on really working on those basics. Um, yeah, and ask questions of your higher belts, especially when you, uh, especially if you tell them, okay, oh, hey, this is what I'm working on before you roll with them and you start in that position and it's not working for you, right? They're just shutting you down everywhere. Be like, how do I, how do I get past this? You know, ask questions. It's, if that's, uh, and you know, when you're doing this, you know, really, what I'm telling you to do is just such a narrow um, field of, of things that you want to work on. And, you know, are these things that you can re realistically get to with other white belts and maybe even other blue belts, right? Um, focus on positions, defenses, and escapes, right? Because let's, let's be real here. As a white belt, you're going to get smashed, right? Most of the people that... Um, you're gonna be rolling with, you know, blue belts, purple belts, brown belts, black belts, they're all objectively better than you. They, it's on their way, so they are just better at jiu-jitsu than you are. Um, and the what happens with that, you're gonna get pinned, okay? So if you're still sticking your arms out when you're on the bottom, and you're like, why do people keep kicking the Americanas and armbars? Well, stop sticking your fucking arms out, you know? Get into that prayer position, only frame when you have to. Um, focus on keep maintaining either upper body mobility, right? So if, uh, you know, if somebody's taking side control, they either need to control your head or they need to control your hips. So you either need to be able to move your upper body or you need to be able to move your hips, okay? So working on hip mobility on the ground, doing a lot of shrimping drills, reverse shrimping drills, things like that. Um, uh, spinning drills, right? Where you are trying to just keep one point of contact on the mat, your shoulders and your hips are up off the ground. Um, like the armbar triangle omoplata drill is really good for that. Start learning how to do barambolos, even if you're not incorporating them into your games. Get used to being up on your shoulders and not on your neck. Um, maybe not when you're rolling, but doing drills um, 
for that so that when you get to that stage, um, your body already kind of knows where that it's already comfortable with you be going inverted and that type of thing. Um, that's going to be very helpful for, for you down the road. But really, when you are rolling, right, you are focusing on escapes and defense, right? Um, if you get to a point where you have a submission, focus on controlling that position first. Don't focus on going right into that submission, right? Because if you give up everything to go for a submission, your higher belt guy is going to just escape from you, right? So any way that you can start to control better and maintain and focus on control rather than just getting hungry for that submission will improve your game uh, exponentially, believe me. Um, and this goes on to the next thing. Now, uh, don't try to learn all of BJJ, and I think I mentioned this a little bit before. Get Just focus on those basics, right? Positions, um, control, escapes, passes, very, very simple things. Stick with the white belt curriculum and get really, really good at that. And, you know, if you are going to venture off the curriculum as a white belt, what I would say to you is um, do it based on what is working for you, right? So if you are finding that your, um, your spider guard is just absolutely crazy good right now and you just have this weird... Um, uh, weird ability to just attack that position and it's just a phenomenal game for you. Go for it. Please, go for it. What I'm telling you is don't drown your brain. There's so much to jiu-jitsu that you don't need to overwhelm yourself with every fancy technique that you can find. You just want to stick to uh, what's actually going to go into your game for now. Um, and, and for you know, understanding the basic principles that they're teaching you in your basics class, those are, um, those are going to be the most valuable thing for you now. Now, part of your question was, how do I get into the blue belt mindset, right? And, and I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get to this. I, I actually didn't realize that I had so much to say on this topic. Um, so when, once you are a blue belt, Blue belt means that you have a good control of the basics. You know, the things that you are um, learning in the basics class are showing up in your rolling, right? You're hitting certain things consistently. Consistently, You're not doing stupid shit like extending your arms out or things like that. So you're not getting arm burn all the time. So some, th some things are really, really starting to show up in your rolling. And maybe, you're, you know, you're finding that you are... Um, getting bored with the new white belts, you know, that are in their first week that you're like, hmm, fresh me, I'm gonna go roll with this guy. Um, you know, <laughs> and you're actually starting to submit some blue belts. So you're actually getting to that uh, consistent blue belt level. Um, so this is the time that you can start collecting new moves. So you know all the basic positions, you have a good con concept of those, and now is the time that you go onto YouTube. Now is the time that you go onto, um, uh, and buy books and you do seminars and things, but try to keep it focused, right? You're expanding your game. You're not just going into the wild west of everything, but you know, start getting curious about it. Your brain is not going to be as overwhelmed because you are now so familiar with those foundational uh, concepts that you can actually start piling things onto them and saying, okay, this is this and this and this. And that's kind of the beginning of being a blue belt, right? Beginning of the blue belt, end of white belt is when you get like really hungry for exploring the ocean that is jujitsu. Um, so what that's going to, uh, if I were to tell you, you know, where to take that is start to double up techniques. And what I mean by that, and uh, this is unfortunately just now getting into my game about two years ago where um, where one of my greatest examples of this is if I'm in side mount right so I've got this like behind somebody's back this is into somebody's belly you know I'm sitting on them and I've got their arm wrapped here um, one of the things that I will do from here is I will actually start trying to set up a triangle choke from here. And I've never, ever hit this triangle choke before. Uh, but I, I start pressing down that bottom arm, right, so that I can put my leg over it. Just flop my shin right over the top of it, staple it down to the mat, and then I can, like, roll through and set up that triangle. I'm not going for the triangle. Okay. I'm pushing that arm down, and I, ne I don't know if I've, I've ever actually even got my leg over there, but what happens when you start pushing that arm down is that they'll take the top arm and they'll start pulling it back up. They don't know what you're doing. What they, what they are doing is they're like, oh shit, I, I, they're, this person who's on top of me 
is going for something, right? And so once I do that, I keep pressure with my top arm and I turn the corner and I grab in the gi, right, on the top lapel and I feed it in. If I need to, I can take this arm off and I can tighten it up because I don't need that anymore, really. I'll grab their pant leg, put my shin to the back of their neck and I pull, okay? It's a variation of like a bow and arrow choke, um, lapel choke. Um, the point of that was, is that when I am trying to go for one submission, I threaten something else first, right? Um, so, you know, you get to somebody's back and everybody's like, oh, I'm going to get a rear naked choke in there. And what, what do people do? They hold on to your arm, right? They're, they're like, no, you're not going to choke me. I know you, I, you've got my back. What are you going to do? Well, you know, there are arm bars from there. So if I've got the seatbelt grip, right, and I'm focusing on this, or maybe I start forcing that bottom arm down, right? They're going to take their top arm and they're going to grab that, that bottom arm, right? Being aware of um, the choke, right? But they'll, they'll start grabbing that and my, I've got the under, underhook here, right? So now is a good time to transition to the arm bar. So if I've got the back, right? I'm here, right? I'm forcing that down. They're protecting. Um, now is a good time for me to kick my leg over, fall to the side, and hit that arm bar, you know. Um, so think about things jujitsu that way, is that, you know, I'm not trying to trick my opponent, right? Um, you know, when I'm doing that, uh, the side mount, trying to go for that triangle, I can go for that triangle, right? If they give me the space, they don't defend that, then I can go for that triangle choke. It's there, right? Um, other things that can, I could set up the armbar from there. Totally. I can just throw my leg over because again, if they're holding on to their bottom arm with the top arm, this is a weak grip. I can pry, pry that up versus if the bottom arm is holding onto the top arm, that's going to be harder to pry off for that armbar. So, right. I have an armbar there. I have a lapel choke from there. I have a triangle choke from there. And I know that those three things play with each other, right? So when I am trying to go for a technique, the technique I want is the second technique in the series, right? So I set up one technique and I start going for the second one. That is a very blue belt thing to do. So, and you can start setting that up as a white belt. Please, by all means, use that advice as a white belt, but that's, you're really gonna start hitting that more in your blue belt um, roles. Um, the other thing, and I mentioned this a little bit on the white belt section, but um, intentionally rolling with people who are better than you. And I, I've made that, mistake quite a bit um, as a blue belt is that, you know, a lot of times, especially if I'm feeling tired, I'll roll with a white belt because I know how that's going to go. <laughs> um, so when you're getting into the blue belt, like really still try to roll with purple belts, other blue belts, brown belts, people that are going to um, keep putting you in the bad positions that it's not easy for you to go for the submissions that you want. Um, that's going to be very vital to you, you know, if you're always getting smashed and you're always working on defense, well, you're not going to uh, improve your top game. So that's, unfortunately, that's what other blue belts and other white belts are for, right? Is is smashing and getting good at your um, your top game. But um, you can do that even with, you know, your your purple, browns, blacks, right? Um, and as, you, as your blue belt, and then this is kind of repetitive to what uh, I've already been talking about, but start defining what your game is. Um, what my coach has told me as far as what's holding me back from my purple belt is that I haven't really uh, established a uh, something that I specialize in, right? So whether, you know, it might be that I like playing X-Guard. I, I, I do X-Guard quite a bit, but um, it's not something I would consider like a specialty. So there's going to be like a position that you really, really get into and that you just learn absolutely everything about that. And that I think is one of the more important things that you can learn as a blue belt, which is to um, really get really good at getting at one position. And we've been setting that up since your white belt, right? We've been setting up, you know, mentally saying, I want to accomplish this in this role. Um, and that will get you to... Um, to learn things better, but now we're doing it so that we absolutely get just phenomenally good at one thing. Um, and that's what I kind of got for you guys. Um, I can talk a little bit about, you know, 
um, advice for a purple belt or a brown belt or things like that. But, you know, I'm a blue belt and I don't quite feel right about doing that. Um, you know, I, I've just picked up on some things over the years just by reading other people. So I think that would just be me parodying a little bit. But for right now, um, that's what I've got. I hope that this is helpful for you, Preston, um, and to anybody else who's watching this. And I know I've, I've said certain things, a lot of this already before on this channel, but um, really that's what I got for you. And if you're watching this and you're not doing jujitsu, right, um, you should start, in my opinion. But, um, you know, you don't have to. I can't force you. But um, <laughs> when it comes to trying to learn things off this channel, the advice that I've just given is all the same, right? Um, you know, focus on uh, basics when I uh, rebirth this channel, which is hopefully coming soon whenever I have an uki. But, um, you know, when it comes time to rebirth this channel, I'm going to try to do a much better job of setting up basics as basics and, and actually kind of create a curriculum for you guys that is a lot easier to follow and a little bit more objective and, and whatnot. Um, and hopefully that's going to help you guys advance better um, and learn better. Um, and... Yeah, I think that's about what I have for you guys for today. Um, thank you so much for wa watching. Um, and I've never said, you know, hit the like or subscribe button uh, for this channel because, you know, I, I'm not making any money off of this. I'm not um, paying any advertisers or I'm not playing the uh, influencer game here. But, um, you know, try to be involved, guys. Um, and I keep begging for this, but, uh, you know, if you have... Uh, certain expertises, things that you want to share, please uh, reach out to me and uh, we'll see about getting you guys involved. Um, and I hope to see you guys soon. All right, you guys have a lovely day. Bye. Rolling, right? You're hitting certain things consistently. Consistently, You're not doing stupid shit like extending your arms out or things like that. So you're not getting arm burn all the time. So some, th some things are really, really starting to show up in your rolling. And maybe you're, you know, you're finding that you are... Um, getting bored with the new white belts, you know, that are in their first week that you're like, hmm, fresh me, I'm gonna go roll with this guy. Um, you know, <laughs> and you're actually starting to submit some blue belts. So you're actually getting to that uh, consistent blue belt level. Um, so this is the time that you can start collecting new moves. So you know all the basic positions, you have a good con concept of those, and now is the time that you go onto YouTube. Now is the time that you go onto, um, uh, and buy books and you do seminars and things, but try to keep it focused, right? You're expanding your game. You're not just going into the wild west of everything, but you know, start getting curious about it. Your brain's not going to be as overwhelmed because you are now so familiar with those foundational uh, concepts that you can actually start piling things onto them and saying, okay, this is this and this and this. And that's kind of the beginning of being a blue belt, right? Beginning of the blue belt, end of white belt is when you get like really hungry for exploring the ocean that is jujitsu. Um, so what that's going to, uh, if I were to tell you, you know, where to take that is start to double up techniques. And what I mean by that, and, uh, this is unfortunately just now getting into my game about two years ago where um, where one of my greatest examples of this is if I'm in side mount right so I've got this like behind somebody's back this is into somebody's belly you know I'm sitting on them and I've got their arm wrapped here um, one of the things that I will do from here is I will actually start trying to set up a triangle choke from here and I've never ever hit this triangle choke before, uh, but I, I start pressing down that bottom arm, right, so that I can put my leg over it, just flop my shin right over the top of it, staple it down to the mat, and then I can like roll through and set up that triangle. I'm not going for the triangle, okay? I'm pushing that arm down, and I, ne I don't know if I've, I've ever actually even got my leg over there, but what happens when you start pushing that arm down is that they'll take the top arm, and they'll start pulling it back up. They don't know what you're doing. What they what they are doing is they're like, oh shit, I, I they're this person who's on top of me is going for something, right? And so once I do that, I keep pressure with my top arm and I turn the corner and I grab in the gi, right? On the top lapel, and I feed it in. If I need to, I can take this arm off and I can tighten it up because I don't need that anymore, really. 
I'll grab their pant leg, put my shin to the back of their neck, and I pull. Okay? It's a variation of like a bow and arrow choke, um, repel choke. Um, the point of that was, is that when I am trying to go for one submission, I threaten something else first, right? Um, so, you know, you get to somebody's back and everybody's like, oh, I'm going to get a rear naked choke in there. And what, what do people do? They hold on to your arm, right? They're, they're like, no, you're not going to choke me. I know you, I, you've got my back. What are you going to do? Well, you know, there are arm bars from there. So if I've got the seatbelt grip, right, and I'm focusing on this, or maybe I start forcing that bottom arm down, right? They're going to take their top arm and they're going to grab that, that bottom arm, right? Being aware of um, the choke, right? But they'll, they'll start grabbing that. And my, I've got the under, underhook here, right? So now is a good time to transition to the arm bar. So if I've got the back, right? I'm here, right? I'm forcing that down. They're protecting. Um, now is a good time for me to kick my leg over, fall to the side, and hit that arm bar. You know, um, so think about things jujitsu that way, is that, you know, I'm not trying to trick my opponent, right? Um, you know, when I'm doing that, uh, the side mount, trying to go for that triangle, I can go for that triangle, right? If they give me the space, they don't defend that, then I can go for that triangle choke. It's there, right? Um, other things that can, I could set up the arm bar from there. Totally. I can just throw my leg over because again, if they're holding on to their bottom arm with the top arm, this is a weak grip. I can pry, pry that up versus if the bottom arm is holding onto the top arm, that's going to be harder to pry off for that arm bar. So, right. I have an arm bar there. I have a lapel choke from there. I have a triangle choke from there. And I know that those three things play with each other. Right. So when I am trying to go for a technique, the technique I want is the second technique in the series, right? So I set up one technique and I start going for the second one. That is a very blue belt thing to do. So and you can start setting that up as a white belt. Please, by all means, use that advice as a white belt. But that's you're really going to start hitting that more in your blue belt um, roles. Um, the other thing, and I mentioned this a little bit on the white belt section, but um, intentionally rolling with people who are better than you. And I, I've made that mistake quite a bit um, as a blue belt is that, you know, a lot of times, especially if I'm feeling tired, I'll roll with a white belt because I know how that's going to go. <laughs> um, so when you're getting into the blue belt, like really still try to roll with purple belts, other blue belts, brown belts, people that are going to... Um, keep putting you in the bad positions that it's not easy for you to go for the submissions that you want. Um, that's going to be very vital to you. You know, if you're always getting smashed and you're always working on defense, well, you're not going to uh, improve your top game. So that's, unfortunately, that's what other blue belts and other white belts are for, right? Is, is smashing and getting good at your, um, your top game. But um, you can do that even with, you know, your, your purple, browns, blacks, right? Um, and as, you, as your blue belt, and this is kind of repetitive to what uh, I've already been talking about, but start defining what your game is. Um, what my coach has told me as far as what's holding me back from my purple belt is that I haven't really uh, established a uh, something that I specialize in, right? So whether, you know, it might be that I like playing X-Guard. I, I, I do X-Guard quite a bit, but... Um, it's not something I would consider like a specialty. So there's going to be like a position that you really, really get into and that you just learn absolutely everything about that. And that I think is one of the more important things that you can learn as a blue belt, which is to um, really get really good at getting at one position. And we've been setting that up since your white belt, right? We've been setting up, you know, mentally saying, I want to accomplish this in this role. Um, and that will get you to... Um, to learn things better, but now we're doing it so that we absolutely get just phenomenally good at one thing. Um, and that's what I kind of got for you guys. Um, I can talk a little bit about, you know, um, advice for a purple belt or a brown belt or things like that, but, you know, I'm a blue belt and I don't quite feel right about doing that. Um, you know, I, I've just picked up on some things over the years just by reading other people, so I think that would just be me parodying a little bit. But for right now, um, 
that's what I've got. I hope that this is helpful for you, Preston, um, and to anybody else who's watching this. And I know I've, I've said certain things, a lot of this already before on this channel, but um, really, that's what I got for you. And if you're watching this and you're not doing jujitsu, right, um, you should start, in my opinion. But, um, you know, you don't have to. I can't force you. But um, <laughs> when it comes to trying to learn things off this channel, the advice that I've just given is all the same, right? Um, you know, focus on uh, basics. When I uh, rebirth this channel, which is hopefully coming soon whenever I have an uki, but, um, you know, when it comes time to rebirth this channel, I'm going to try to do a much better job of setting up basics as basics and, and actually kind of create a curriculum for you guys that is a lot easier to follow and a little bit more objective and, and whatnot. Um, and hopefully that's going to help you guys advance better um, and learn better. Um, and... Yeah, I think that's about what I have for you guys for today. Um, thank you so much for wa watching. Um, and I've never said, you know, hit the like or subscribe button uh, for this channel because, you know, I, I'm not making any money off of this. I'm not um, paying any advertisers or I'm not playing the uh, influencer game here. But, um, you know, try to be involved, guys. Um, and I keep begging for this, but, uh, you know, if you have... Uh, certain expertises, things that you want to share, please uh, reach out to me and uh, we'll see about getting you guys involved. Um, and I hope to see you guys soon. All right, you guys have a lovely day. Bye.